God bless you. I love you all so much, and uh, this is going to be a wonderful day. And he's such a good preacher. You're going to enjoy. You might have to cut him off because it's getting kind of late. Fun living with her. I struggled all week with just feeling the sure direction that I should go with this message today. And uh, last night the Lord seemed to just really settle my mind on it. And uh, trust it's going to be something that's uh, going to help some of you, maybe many of you. And... Uh, We'll just trust and believe the Lord for it. It's such a joy to have so many of our family and uh, friends here today of uh, wonderful good memories of past times and, and past years. And uh, thank you all for being here today. Most of all, are you glad the Lord Jesus is here today? I feel his presence, don't you? Praise God. I want to talk to you this morning about the matters of the mind. Because I think that the mind is a, a wonderful and a marvelous thing. Um, I truthfully do not believe that we sometimes respect, honor, and care for our mind the way we should. Um, it is a precision instrument, I guess it would be, a fair word to say. Its function is absolutely so amazing and miraculous. It was made by God Himself, who He created us in His own image. We sometimes use the phrase, the mind of Christ. Uh, I'd like for you, as I begin talking to you this morning to understand that, that you are capable, able, and privileged to have the ability to have the mind of Christ, to accommodate and facilitate the moving, the directing, the enlightenment of God himself in your mind. And the mind is a valuable thing to protect, to nurture, and to manage properly. Let me read you three scriptures to begin with. I will begin in Matthew 22. <clears throat> the scripture here in 20, Matthew 22, 37 says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. How many believe Jesus is in your heart? How many believe that the presence of God is in your soul as a whole being? How many believe that God is in your mind? that you serve God with your mind. Now that, that's not all that comfortable to wrap your thoughts around, that you serve God with your mind. But maybe that's why the Lord wants me to talk to us today about it. The powerful truth of the function of our mind and our fulfilling the calling and the purpose and design of God for your life by the proper use and function of your mind. Romans, the seventh chapter, and the 25th verse, says this, I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. So he was saying here that he served the Lord and served the law of God with his mind. And then the third scripture is in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, 
and the 12th verse. For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The thoughts. You've probably had several hundred thoughts go through your mind since you woke up this morning. Those thoughts are very powerful and have great potential. So Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to give to us your word today, to give guidance, understanding, enlightenment, and enablement, O oh God, to use our mind and to facilitate the function of our mind according to the Spirit according to your purpose, according to your will. Give us, Lord, your thoughts today in Jesus' name. Amen. Your life will follow your thoughts. Have you heard that before? Your life will follow your thoughts. The scripture puts it this way. As a man thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. Now that's not just another phrase to kind of pass off lightly in the Bible. That's a spiritual truth. It's a scriptural truth. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Because your life will ultimately follow your thoughts. That's a good reason why it's a wonderful thing that you're able to process thoughts properly. Because every thought you have is not a good thought. Every thought you think is not a helpful thought. And you need to develop and have an effective process of processing those thoughts so that your life is guided and directed in the right way. Because if we couldn't think, what kind of beings would we be? It's amazing that we can think. And when you can no longer think, you got real problems and real difficulties. And so the Word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Right now, it is very possible that the Holy Spirit is attempting to monitor some of your thoughts and my thoughts. I needed this message. Sometimes my thoughts are not good thoughts in terms of helpful to me. And I, I need the ability to allow the Holy Spirit to monitor and to direct and to handle those thoughts to give me the ability to do that because they're my thoughts. I think my thoughts. My thoughts don't think me. I think my thoughts, and those thoughts can be helpful and they can also be harmful. And you do not have the ability to live in an isolated cube or atmosphere that you don't have exposure to wrong thoughts. You can read a billboard, you can see something on TV, you can see something in a book or magazine that triggers a thought to you that can be damaging and harmful to you. And you need the ability to process those thoughts so they do not take root and cause you to do actions that are detrimental to you and harmful to you and damaging to you. And so how do how would he do this? I just want to mention one scripture too that says that, that to be carnally minded is what? Death. There's a lot of things in your life that will die. By carnal thoughts, if they're allowed to root and to cause you to do things that will hurt, damage, you can suffer great loss by being carnally minded. But to be spiritually, everybody say spiritually, spiritually minded is life and peace. I like that, don't you? I like life and I like peace. And to be spiritually minded 
will provide you with that opportunity. Let me just try to, I'm, I'm not trained and educated in the, the physical aspects of this, but I, I read, studied. Let me try to describe to you in my words best I can how thoughts work. It was intriguing to me. <clears throat> Sometimes we, we wonder, well, I, a thought went through my mind. Uh, one lady said she was sitting on a, a thought and a bench went through her mind. <clears throat> Sometimes that's the way my thoughts are. And, uh, <clears throat> but when a thought, which this article that I, in the material I studied, expressed it in a terms of a vibration. I never thought in terms of that as a thought in our mind, but it referred to it as a vibration. <clears throat> it goes through our mind, and our mind stores that. It, it doesn't, doesn't disappear, it, it just stores it. And uh, then when a thought is repeated, of the same vein or associated or connected with it, that your brain attaches an emotion to it, to that thought. Got it? It attaches an emotion to that thought. And then that further intensifies the vibration. That's sometimes why you're sitting there watching television and then within almost a few minutes there'll be the same advertisement three or four times. You know why that is? That's to reinforce that thought. It isn't the TV station making a mistake of putting those ads on right after each other. But before that thought has had a chance to really settle, to, to really be dispersed or dispensed, whatever, they hit another ad, same thing, same one, you wonder, well, that's stupid. The same ad twice. No, it wasn't stupid. Because that image, that thought that struck you from that advertisement becomes reinforced by the next time you see it, and another thought triggers that emotion. And before long, after that's repeated two or three or four times, that thought becomes very active. And pretty soon you do something in response to that thought that at one time was nothing but a thought that could have passed and disappeared. But you thought about it. That thought became an emotion. My wife here a few oh, days, or I don't know, I don't think it was a week, but a few days ago, mentioned something about a purse she saw. And uh, she liked that purse. She came home and told me about it. But she said, no, I didn't think I... I should get it. But apparently that thought came back. <laughs> and she probably thought about it again. And an emotion attached to it. And before you know it, she pulls out her credit card and pays for a new purse. That thought, that image, that at one time was nothing but a fleeting thought became a real act and a real possession. And she, she has it with her this morning. That purse to her was one time just a thought. Just a thought. And so then this accentuated vibration is sent to the subconscious mind which stores it and immediately begins to act upon the information received. That's information about it. It's just more attached to that thought. The subconscious does not differentiate between right and wrong, true or false, good or bad. It only stores it, the subconscious. What is presented, it, it goes to work to match these vibrations, even with those in the spiritual dimension. Then, these predominant thoughts are creative and bring back to you what you asked or presented. They produce a harvest. 
They're like seed that's planted. Once that thought becomes attached, then it's like a seed. If it's fed, if it's added to by additional thoughts, that seed will sprout, that seed thought, or that thought seed will produce an action. It'll produce a, a uh, situation. I think it'd be fair to illustrate it this way, that if Alexander Graham Bell had not thought that he could design a device that people could talk to each other across the country, do you think he ever would have invented it? No. The telephone was one time a thought. Think about that. At one time, way a long time ago, but in reality, not all that long ago. But it was just a thought. But that thought remained. And another thought added to that thought. Another thought accumulated and attached to that thought. And the vibrations continued until Alexander Graham Bell conceived the idea, conceived the concept, and produced a prototype of what became the telephone. And, and now look at what we've got. <clears throat> These, at one time, were just a thought. Nothing more. Just a concept. It's important that we understand the power of our thoughts. How about the Wright brothers? One of them one day had a thought. Wouldn't it be an awesome thing to be able to fly like a bird? Wouldn't it be amazing to be able to defy gravity and to invent a machine that would enable us to rise above the earth and fly? And that thought didn't go away, but it was attached to some other thoughts. Well, what if, what if? Another thought, well, what about this? And that thought attached to another, and pretty soon it became an action. And some materials started to be put together, some drawings and some prototypes. And eventually, one day, a thought carried them in the air, in an airplane. And now jets fly people across the world, across the country, we don't think much about it, but really, it all began with a thought. Colonel Sanders was an older man. When a crazy thought came to his mind, what if I would fry chicken for the whole country? <laughs> you know, I'm glad Colonel Sanders had that thought. But at one time, to him, it was just a thought. But now his thought has become Kentucky Fried Chicken all around the country and the world. When at one point, it was just a thought. Thoughts <clears throat> are seeds sown with an emotion and an action that become, can become world-changing realities. Awareness plus desire plus belief, plus action, results in unlimited capability. I'm here to tell you today that you're sitting here right now with the potential of thinking a thought that could change the world. It at least could change your world. And on the other side of the picture, some of you may be struggling with thoughts that could devastate your world, devastate your circumstances. It's so important that we learn how, through the help of the Holy Spirit, to gird up the loins of our mind and to cause our thoughts to be proper. Change your thoughts, and you will change your world. That's a famous saying anymore. Change your thoughts and change your world. So we should consciously become aware of the thoughts, what they are, and focus on them in a way that would be beneficial to us. 
Scripture says in Romans, the 12th chapter, the first verse, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Your bodies. We're talking about us now. Not pie in the sky, not just spiritual stuff, but our bodies. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to what? This world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's being transformed. Now, I personally believe that is not the same experience as being born again or saved, as we say. There's a marvelous experience in salvation when God washes and wipes away your sins, makes you clean, righteous in Christ Jesus. But you still have your mind. Your mind is still part of your physical being. And that mind has learned a process by your thought process heretofore. And sometimes after you're saved, the mind doesn't necessarily function in harmony and coordination with the spiritual experience you've had. Where in your heart you love God. In your heart and your soul being, you love the Lord and you're thankful for what the Lord has done. But your mind, if still carnal, will be subject to the negative thoughts. I preached years ago on don't be a sniop. Do you know what a sniop is? It's being subject to the negative influence of other people. Subject to the negative influence of other people. There are things that in your life, even this very day, that will cause you to think some thoughts because you're influenced by somebody. They will do something, say something, act out something that will cause you to have a thought. And it may not be good. It may stir up bad feelings, bad emotions. You need to be careful how your mind is influenced by the negative influence of other people. And so the scripture says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove. Prove. That means you'll say, hey, that's okay. That's a good thought. And you allow that thought. But if not, you're able to reject it and dispose of it. And so be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. 1 Peter 1.13 says, gird up the loins of your mind. It, it, visually, what does that say to you? Gird up. Doesn't that mean to kind of wrap up, to, to confine, to bring together? Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance. So after you're saved, after you're born again, you've still got this mind issue that you need to deal with and you need to work with and you need to strive to have a spiritual mind. And it's an important thing. It's that, that scripture is really an important scripture. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you now think better, think good thoughts, think right thoughts, and you're able to slam the door on those bad ones. You're able to close the book when it's not good, to throw away the magazine when it's not good, to switch off the switch when it's not good. That you can learn to reject and turn away those thoughts and images that create ultimately actions if you allow them to accumulate. If you're battling with bad thoughts, 
guilt and shame, condemnation, as a result of lack of relationship with the Lord. Let me, let me say to you today, God loves you. God loves you. There's great potential in you, in every one of you. There's great exceeding promises and provisions and designs that God has for you. God wants your life to be rich, blessed, wholesome, and happy. And it can come about because you're able to process your thoughts. But if you're here and you have not repented, you have not asked the Lord to forgive your sins, I encourage you, I, I, I urge you, before you leave this building this morning, open your heart to the Lord and ask for his forgiveness. Ask for his release from the guilt of your past life, your past actions. He said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. There's no reason in God's wide world that you should live one more day in condemnation. The Bible says there is now. Now. Then was then. But now there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So what's necessary today for you to find that glorious experience of finding yourself in Christ? In Christ. Hallelujah. And so you can start to delete bad thoughts. Get rid of the condemnation, the guilt. Understand who you are in Christ Jesus. You're a vessel of honor. You're a vessel of honor. You're not evil. You are not hateful. You are not bad. God created you in His image. And bad thinking may have messed up your life in a lot of different ways. But you're not a bad person. You've just been subject to bad thinking. And if you get your thinking straightened out and get the sin issue settled with God, then you can begin to think good things. What the Bible says, things that are true, whatsoever things are noble, just, pure, lovely, good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praiseworthy things, think. Everybody say, think. Think. Sometimes you need to just purposely sit down and think some good things. You say, that sounds kind of stupid, sitting there thinking. No, sometimes thinking is not bad. Some people say meditate. Well, it depends on what you're using your meditation for. But sometimes it's good for you to just sit down with you, yourself, and think good things. Good things. What are the good things God's given me? What are the good things God's blessed me with? I've got a roof over my head. Thank you, Lord. I have money to get what I need today. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your provision. I've got food in the cupboard. I've got flowers to enjoy. I can see. I can walk. I can talk. I can think. Hallelujah. I can think. We ought to say, God, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you gave me such an amazing, amazing experience to be able to think good thoughts. The carnal mind is at enmity, the Bible says, with God. The carnal mind. Philippians 4 gives the antidote to that. And it says that he is able to keep your hearts and minds. He, he is able to keep your hearts. Yes, your heart's important, but also your minds. Hallelujah. Able to keep your minds. Hallelujah. Right now, just take your hand and put it on the side of your head. Now, I want you just to say in your heart, or you can say it verbally. Thank you, Lord, for my mind. Help me to use my mind according to your will and purpose. Let me use your spirit to monitor my thoughts and to control my mind. Hallelujah.
To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And I've got to conclude. We read the story of the prodigal son, and there's all kinds of marvelous life applications in the story of the prodigal son. But I think when it's all sorted out and boiled down, it really comes down to this. It was a story of bad thinking. There's nothing in the Bible that says anything about him being a bad boy. It doesn't say he was a bad son. He was one of two brothers, but he started a thought process. And the thought process made him start thinking, I'm not getting all that I should here at home. And I'm limited and restricted here at home. And if I just got out there and I had the steering wheel and I made the choices and decisions, life would expand so wonderfully with me. And so he had some thoughts that ultimately did him in. And he took his inheritance and he went from a far country. So that was the first bad thinking, to isolate himself from those who were a good influence on his life. I just feel like the Spirit prompted me to say this to somebody today. Don't remove yourself or distance yourself from those that will give you a positive influence and effect on your life. Stay close to them. Stay near them. Don't isolate yourself. Don't isolate yourself. Hang with people that will be a positive influence on your life. And so his thoughts had gone on the wrong track. Nothing changed. His life, you know, got messed up. He spent all he had, and he finds himself in the hog pen. Broke, disillusioned, realizing now he really had messed up, and he had really got things confused. Nothing changed. He was still in the hog pen. There were still flies, stinky smell, until he came to himself. What do you think that phrase means? He came to himself. You know what I think it means? He got his thinking straightened out. He got back on the right track in his thoughts. Not perfect, but he began to think good things, better things. Not clearly, because now he has the mindset of a servant, of a hog feeder. He wasn't there, but he was coming to himself. He was getting his mind back on track. He had, that, to that point, followed his urges, his cravings, and his ambitions. And those urges had brought him to the hog pen. The flies didn't have to leave, the hog pen didn't have to get clean, and the smell didn't have to be nice and clean, cleaned up. All he had to do was come to himself. This may be a moment for some here today to come to yourself, to get back in that original mindset. Hmm. Didn't the speaker do good, Jessica, last Sunday? God's intent. Get back into that original intent God has for you. God's will is for good for you. Blessings for you. It happens in your mind before it happens in your body. He never turned away from the hog pen until he came back to his right thinking. You do it in your mind before you do it in your body. Change happens from the core. There's good seed in your life. There's good things in your life. And it's time for you to think those thoughts 
that will bring you back to your place of blessing and goodness. He said, if I could just go to my father's house. You see, how you perceive determines how you believe. Your perspective affects your perception. Things look different for me looking out here at you than it looks for you out there looking at me. The perspective is different. You react differently to it. And from the hog pen, he had a different perception of his home. He went home feeling like he'd have to be a servant. But see, those thoughts hadn't all cleared out yet. He still had a slave mentality. It was somewhat like the children of Israel. They'd lived in Egypt all those years and they had a mindset. They had been abused. They'd been beaten. They'd been mistreated. They'd been despised and cheated on. All those years they lived in that day after day, year after year after year, they had a slave mentality. And when they got out of Egypt, they still battled that. What was just a few days journey ended up a 40 year journey. Why? Because of their mindset. We're not able. We can't do that. We're just servants. We're just slave people. No, they weren't. They were God's chosen people. God had a promise for them, a promised land. And so it's important for us to get our thinking clear. You see, in this story, it wasn't only the prodigal son that had a problem with his thinking. The son that stayed at home and was a nice boy and did everything right, he had a thinking problem too, didn't he? When his brother came home, he got all upset. And bad thoughts went through his mind. Jealousy got a hold of him. And he resented the fact that they was having a party for his brother that had been lost and was gone for all that time. And now he has to battle his thoughts. So you don't have to be a bad person to have some bad thoughts, bad thinking. God wants to help us all with our thinking today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unbelief is a choice. Faith is a gift. Job battled. It wasn't just physical. It was also a mental thing. Read the book of Job and you know Job questions God. He couldn't figure it out. He was confused in his mind, but the devil was attacking him where he knew he was most vulnerable. But through it all and through the boils and the misery and the loss of all that he had, Job still had one solid thought that he held to. I know that even though the worms destroy this fleshly body, yet, yet, in spite of everything that had happened, yet, I will see God. Yet, I will see God. Whatever it is that you've gone through that you're battling with today, I want you to be able to leave here this, this morning saying, yet, I believe. Yet I believe. Yet I believe. And I close with this for your consideration. You're not the only one that thinks. You're not the only one that thinks. God thinks. Now that kind of made you swallow a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, God thinks. Let me tell you what he thinks. In the 29th chapter, the 11th verse, he says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. Woo! Hallelujah! Have you stopped to consider God has thoughts about you? You was in God's thoughts this morning. You was in God's thinking this morning. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. He said, I, he says, the Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will Listen to you. 
Whoo, hallelujah. Makes me want to speak in tongues. Hallelujah. And I will listen. I want you to stand with me right now. Because somebody needs to grab this thought. Grab this word from the word of the Lord and go with it today. Maybe the prayer team wants to come here. And if you need to go, we'll dismiss you in a moment. But I don't want you to miss what God has for you this morning. And if you've had a struggle with your thoughts or your thinking, you, you've had a problem, the consequence being sometimes depression, oppression, sadness, bad thoughts, bad thoughts, and you can't seem to get clear from them. God wants to help you today. I want you just to make your way out of your seat right now before you leave this morning. Come down here. We want to pray with you because God loves you. God has good thoughts about you. And he says, if you'll pray, if you'll talk to me, I will listen. I will listen. God will hear you. Would you like for God to hear your heart today? Come on, let's, let's just come down here right now if you need God's attention today. You, you want God to touch your heart, touch your thinking, touch your thoughts. You're not coming as a bad person. You're coming as a chosen, wonderful child of God that the Lord cares for, that He died for. He wants to help you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to bless you with good thinking, wholesome thinking. I want you just to, to believe that God is here to help you today. Don't leave here succumbing and yielding to a thought. So, oh, don't bother with it. You can, you can do this another time. It may be that this week will be the need in your life for some good thoughts that will turn the direction and the course of your life to something positive. It may be a business decision. It may be a family decision. It may be a circumstance that you need the guidance and direction and anointing of the Lord to help you. I want you just to come and they'll pray with you. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit. Thank you, O oh God, for your thoughts towards us, for our good and for our blessing. And now, Lord, I just pray that you would enable us this week as we leave here today that we will be enabled by the Spirit, O oh God, to monitor and gird up the loins of our mind, to think those things that will bring peace and joy and harmony. Hallelujah. Give us your thoughts. Give us your mind, O oh God. Give us, O oh God, the victories that you designed and have for us. Hallelujah. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you and lift up his countenance upon you and make his face to shine upon you. May he fill your heart and mind with good, wholesome, fruitful thoughts of his purpose and will and design for your life. May he bless your home with peace and harmony. May your cupboards be full. May your resources be increased. And may you walk in the peace and the joy of a mind monitored and led by the Holy Spirit. And may he give you his peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. These people are